Getting lonely out here. We saw one or two tankers. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the only issue is we've got a bit of convection ahead. More thunderstorm activity, so we have to be dealing with that this time tomorrow. But so far, so good. And we are northbound. Panama is for now in a rear view mirror. Still on our radar, but in our rear view mirror. It looks like the barnacle buster did the trick on the engines. Temperatures are good, but it feels good to be going with the wind. Is Squall going to get us? No. Wow, it's such a quiet day, I, uh, I forgot to film. Uh, <laughs> a couple hours ago, the wind just died off. So we've been motoring, first with the sails up, then we took them down. We are approaching Cape Hatteras, though. Not at all displeased with the lack of wind. I want calm, calm, calm conditions going around Hatteras. That's a real deal cape. The weather seems to be pretty mellow. Where are you guys headed? We are headed to Wilmington, Delaware, and then we're gonna jump across the pond here and go to Italy. So jealous. <laughs> Megan says she is jealous. That sounds nice. A hundred days around the world. Wow, that is a uh, that is a fine average speed. Uh, thanks for calling up. Uh, clarity back to one six. I mean, we're just out in the middle of nowhere on the ocean. And hey, Clarity, what's going on? That was pretty cute. He said he watches our our videos every week. I wish you all could be here right now because it's perfect. It's hard to describe what it's like to be offshore for an extended period of time. In fact, time itself seems to get a little fluid. Hours pass in what seems like minutes and moments seem to drag on into almost infinity. It's quite strange, actually. And all the details tend to jump out at you, like the volume is turned up to 11. All the little waves, all the little ripples, become distinct. And we're just so incredibly blown away that we live in a time where there are tools that can bring you along for the experience. gliding into this beautiful sunset, a little crisp air, it's perfectly quiet, just the waves lapping against the hull, no other boats out here, I feel super grateful, so grateful for this boat bringing us safely up the coast. I feel grateful for you, Nick, for being such a great captain. And I feel grateful that we have a whole new chapter ahead of us. And I just feel really good, really happy. I'm proud of us. Alright, it's 
bit of a problem. The uh, Sargasso weed here, about 45 miles south of Cape Hatteras, is it's thick. It's in islands, big clumps, and it's getting uh, wrapped up in our propeller. So I gotta constantly tick it out of gear and float through. So that's kind of hampering our our forward progress here. But yeah, Sargasso Islands, crazy. As we close in on Cape Hatteras, there's a surprising amount of shipping traffic. Everybody trying to cut the corner in one spot. We also seem to get out of those Sargasso weed patches that were plaguing us all night long. Unfortunately, we still had some sort of vibration coming from the starboard prop. Sending the camera over the side, clearly I could see there was nothing tangled up. This was a big bummer because evidently our props still need some work. One blade had come loose in January, so we removed it in the Bahamas and I rebuilt that prop with new bearings. Then just a couple months ago, both props seemed to have a loose blade, so I pulled them both off in Fort Lauderdale and rebuilt them again. I think it may be time to call in the professionals. <laughs> so, smell that. Do you think that'll be good in there? I don't want to mind. Oh my god, he doesn't even want it. What are you doing? I'm making you a fancy egg burrito. Fancy egg burrito. Yeah. Otherwise known as a rolled taco. Yeah. We just came around Hatteras. Uh, are we day three or day four? Day, day four. We're in day four. And it looks like uh, the wind is going to show back up here later on today for our final run up to the uh, Chesapeake. Wow, we were just chit-chatting in the salon. <laughs> I look behind us and I see a string of <laughs> lobster pots. <laughs> Crab pots? I don't even know. Wow. This this is something I forgot about the Chesapeake area. We got so lucky. It doesn't get much better than this. We've got an offshore breeze coming up the outside of North Carolina. Let's see what that wind's doing. Wind's blowing at about 14 knots and we're doing seven knots or so. And it's flat. It is just so nice out here. It is so beautiful out here. It's just so flat, perfect temperatures, nice, a little cool, not too warm. <gasps> well, we've got a nice close reach, 13 knots of wind, boat doing eight, eight and a half. Not a bad way to finish up this trip. Yeah, we had a little thunderstorm that passed by us, but no lightning or rain, and now we're flying. Oh, it's about three in the morning and we are just about to the entrance. A little nerve wracking coming through here. There's a lot of big ships coming and going from this entrance. And uh, seeing this is the middle of the night, I'm really glad to have the AIS tracking. See how fast the ships are going and what direction they're going. So it'll be collision avoidance here for the next couple of hours. And uh, 
Our ETA sometime mid morning tomorrow. It's time to celebrate. Well done, Cap. You got us from Fort Lauderdale to the Chesapeake. Passage well done. Passage pancakes. <laughs> These are low carb, keto, <laughs> no flour, no sugar. There's nothing but carrots and chickpeas and spirulina in here. Yeah. How you got it to look like this, I it's do not CGI. know. How is it? Mm. Is it worth the miles? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like a big biscuit. <laughs> mm. Thank you, honey. You're welcome, thank you. Gonna get some stuff done here and get a family visit in, hopefully. Then we head north. Then we head north, yes. <laughs> uh, the boat is in pretty good condition. We didn't break anything. That's nice. We didn't break anything on our, you know, flirting with thousand mile trip, you know, 800, 825 miles, something like that. And uh, so there's a lot to be said for that, but the boat is very salty. Very salty. However, I'm gonna give myself a one day respite. I think I deserve to maybe watch a movie. But you can uh, have a break on. for one day. Thank you, yeah. very nice. I don't think I'd be very productive if I tried to go after it today. I think I'd just stare at it going, now wait, we were in the Exumas? <laughs> or you'd be like turning the boat around going back down there. Let's go back. <laughs> I don't want to go north. It's brown up here. It's brown. It's going to give you one shot. You better Do hook it. Not miss a beat. Opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yeah. You got to moor it, moor it, moor it. <laughs> Good job, boss. Getting into Zimmerman Marine is a little tricky. You have to wait for high tide, and then you have to hug the right side and get as close to that white pole without hitting it. This is a great spot for clarity while we go back to Portland and see family. It's also a good spot to do a few more boat projects. There's always a few more boat projects to do. All right, we're getting ready to get hauled out of the water here. There's a few things that we do before we get picked out of the water. We close the through holes to the air conditioners, the toilets, the gen set, and to the inlet seacocks for the engines so that when we go back into the water, we don't end up with dry lines. We also drain out most of our fresh water so that we're not hauling a whole bunch of weight in the forward end of the boat. And then lastly, we drop the dinghy down into the water so that we don't have that extra weight on the back of the boat. We're all just trying to lighten the load on the structure of the boat. We also took down the head sail because you have to do that. It's one of their rules because if it were to come unfurled on the hard, it would take the boat down and perhaps other boats around it. So we removed the head sail and also the mainsail because we're getting a new main. While we're here, we'll be doing a little bit of bottom work, finishing up our electrical power redesign, sending our propellers off for a factory overhaul, doing some engine maintenance, and we'll also be measuring for a new mainsail. So stay tuned for a lot of boat maintenance and upgrade information in coming videos.